Steve Hill, welcome to KTNV. Thanks for coming on. Glad to be here, John. Thanks. So uh, you are the miracle worker of economic development in this state. You brought Tesla. You brought Faraday. Those were very complicated deals to get done. Uh, can this stadium deal get done in some form, considering how time is running out to get this out of the stadium committee, to get it through the legislature, then it has to be done by the NFL owners in January, or essentially you lose a year. Can it still be done? Oh, it certainly can still be done. Um, and you mentioned Tesla and Faraday. They were complicated deals. Um, this one's just a little different because it's being done in public. Uh, but uh, we have time to get it done, but uh, there's a fair amount of work to do yet. When you say there's a fair amount of work to do, to talk about what the, what the stumbling blocks are now. Well, here's what we know about. We know that the public money issue is still out there. Is it going to be the $750 million the developers are essentially insisting on or something less? Which site? Uh, are, are, they, are they going to uh, use? And isn't there still somewhat of a vague uh, uh, proposal for a tax increment district? We don't exactly know what that is. Those are three issues I know about. Are, are those the right issues or are there other, other ones as well? Well, th 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 we're writing what amounts to uh, something that would look like a bill draft request uh, for the project. Uh, so we want to we make sure that to the extent that we can as a committee um, wrap up the entire uh, arrangement with the developers and the team and not leave um, things hanging that then have to be renegotiated at a potential legislative session. So the list there is pretty long, but it's not, they aren't issues that can't be resolved. And we're working with the team uh, and the developers to do that along the way. You mentioned really the, the, the three um, largest issues that have to be resolved. One is the deal itself from a money standpoint. Um, the second is location, um, and I will say that when it comes to location, the, uh, the structure of the agreement that we've worked out is that a stadium authority board would be created as a result of this legislation. They would oversee the contracting process with the team and the developers uh, following legislative action. Um, and so a, a site, a definitive site is not necessary from the committee standpoint. We just need to know that a stadium could and would be built if we move forward. So if I heard you correctly, and you may not like this translation of your words, but you essentially want what you had with Tesla and Faraday, which is when you go to the legislature, you just want them to rubber stamp the deal and not really have <laughs> much say in, in the details. Is that what you're saying? No, that's not really what I'm saying. <laughs> um, we, we, we think it's our responsibility to um, look at all the issues that are involved, whether it was Tesla or Faraday uh, or the stadium project and the convention center. We did the same thing with the convention center. Um, the legislature will certainly thoroughly vet each one of those proposals. They did with Tesla and Faraday. Did they? They, they made did changes. They, really? did they, 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 did. they did, and they made some changes to those um, that I think were beneficial. Um, so that process um, is important. Um, and I know the legislators will, uh, legislators will pay uh, very close attention to it. You may or may not know, because in case people don't know, you've been on a trade mission to Australia. But while you were gone, I had Steve Sisolak and uh, Carolyn Goodman uh, here talking about this. And essentially, Steve Sisolak essentially said that it was you and Jeremy Aguero, who, who was the uh, financial advisor, who came up with this reduction from $750 million to $500 million in, in the public money, but that essentially no one's going for that, that the developers won't go for it, that nobody else is going for it. Do you still think that's the right amount, $500 million? Well, it's actually 550. 550, excuse um, me. And we weren't saying that's exactly the right amount. Um, what Jeremy and I did was put together not only a different dollar amount, but the entirety of the uh, the language and the bullet points uh, for a deal structure. Because prior to that, all we had received from the developers and the team was really three numbers. It was a 1.4 billion dollar stadium. 750 million coming from the public sector, 650 between the developers and the team, um, and that was it. So in order to make a thorough recommendation, we needed an entire deal structure. So um, that's very difficult to do um, and time consuming to do. You can't really do it in a committee setting. Um, so we thought putting out an alternative proposal would allow the committee to look at what alternatives might look like, uh, weigh in on that, uh, as well as allow the, the developers and the team to do the same. What over like a lead balloon though, right? I mean, the developers don't like it, do they? Well, most negotiations, when you make a counteroffer, um, 
it's not necessarily immediately well received. Um, but I do think it provides an alternative to look at um, that can be helpful in uh, informing the committee, allowing them a little easier time to weigh in on what alternatives may be, um, and also a much more detailed look at what the entire uh, project uh, structure would be. What is the argument, the public policy argument, whether it's 550 or 750 or less or more than either of those figures, for the public, through room taxes, yes, they're tourists, to pay any of this, considering uh, you have an NFL team and two billionaires essentially proposing this. Some people might say, you know what, they shouldn't, there shouldn't be any public money going into this. These guys can afford to do it. And if there is public money, and I've been asked this a lot, why shouldn't the public share in the profits of this? Well, I'll, I'll take that last point first. Um, it really one, was two questions in one, I yeah, admit it. One of the uh, recommendations that Jeremy and I put in that alternative proposal was a revenue sharing above 9% return on investment. They don't the like that either, though, do they, Mr. Hill? The well, th th they probably won't say yes to things until we get closer to the end. And we'll you still see think what there's a chance you could get profit sharing? I, I do, oh, yes. Okay. Yeah. Um, and I think that's an important component because there are unknowns uh, when it comes to the return on investment for the, the developers. Um, and that's largely based on the number of events that will be held in the stadium. So, um, we, you know, because we don't have a stadium here, we're making a projection. Um, it starts at 46 events, um, but um, it could be less, it could be more. The developers are taking the risk on the less side, um, but if it is uh, substantially more, then their return on investment could get to be reasonably high. It's not going to be a windfall. Uh, but above some 8, 9, 10% number, uh, we think the public sharing makes sense. Um, there's really, uh, I guess, um, four real reasons why the public would invest in, uh, in a stadium. And they're, for the most part, similar to why the public invests in a convention center. Um, one's the economic impact outside of the stadium itself, um, and that basically translates to jobs. Um, so we think there will be 6,000 or so jobs generated up and down the strip and into the community as a result of the stadium. Those project. are not the construction jobs. No, not the construction about. jobs. Permanent, permanent jobs. jobs in the community, okay. some of which would be at the stadium, but really a vast majority outside of the stadium itself. Um, then because of all that economic activity, there would be taxes generated as well. Um, now, we don't think that the taxes generated would necessarily equate to the amount of revenue invested, uh, but it is one of the benefits of investing in the stadium. Um, a third is the fact that UNLV obviously needs a, a new place to play football. Um, a, the committee, I think, has um, interest in helping UNLV um, have a better place to play, something that makes more sense for the students on campus and helps you know, grow the football program and the university at UNLV. Um, this would allow that to happen. Um, the alternative to not having a domed NFL stadium would mean probably spending at least half of the amount that we would put into an NFL stadium uh, into a UNLV stadium at some point. Um, and then the fourth is having an NFL team in Vegas uh, while it's hard to put a number around what that's worth, there's value there. Uh, it's a, a branding opportunity. Uh, it says something about the community, uh, and I think it opens a lot of doors. Yeah, and, and you made the same arguments, and, and I think they've borne out, at least in the short run, with Tesla especially. You change the dynamic. You change the way that uh, a state or a community is looked at if you get a big brand name like a Tesla or like uh, the NFL. And I know you've read a lot about these stadium deals because, because I know you. There's, there's a lot of literature out there that says these stadium deals are not good for the communities in the long run. And a lot, a lot of communities have been left holding the bag. That's a cliche, but to some extent. The Raiders don't have the greatest history in, in, in some of these things. There's no guarantee that outside of the, of the reason number four that you're talking about, it seems to me, which could be significant enough in and of itself, that this is going to be an economic boon to this community. Is there? Well, there's certainly no guarantee of that. Um, I also don't think that the opposite of that being the stadium since empty and gathers right. dust is a, at all a likelihood in Las Vegas. Right. Um, the, the, the economic impact for any city comes from tourists coming to town. Um, the, it's a great thing for locals in, in Nevada, 
Um, but they would probably spend their money someplace. They may choose to spend it at the stadium on a game or go to the strip afterwards, but they're probably going to spend their money someplace. Bringing new money to Nevada is what economic development is all about. Um, Las Vegas is certainly unique when it comes to attracting tourists, having the infrastructure that it takes to allow a project like the stadium to grow the tourism industry. We're projecting, I think, somewhere around 23% of the attendees would be tourists, and that, that 23% uh, tourism number is what would generate that benefit. Um, if the Raiders would happen to leave, which obviously they, they're, they're very committed to coming, and you have no doubt of that, that we're not being used as pawns and all the other stuff that's been out there. I, I really don't. No. You, you feel that they're committed because uh, you looked into Mark Davis's <laughs> eyes like, like George Bush looked into Putin's eyes and saw into his soul, or you just really believe it based on your experience making these deals? Well, I believe it because of what I see. It's not just what Mr. Davis says, which I certainly appreciate. He's been very public about it. It would right. be... Um, I would think embarrassing at this point for him to backtrack on that. But I see how hard they're working on this. We talk to them on a daily basis. They're going through this language. They're looking at sites. They're investing a lot of money in this effort to try and make this work. So I, I, think, they're, I, I think they're very committed uh, to being in Las Vegas. Um, it's 10 of the 46 events, though, for the stadium. So if down the road um, the... NFL decides that Vegas isn't the right market for them, um, there's still plenty of opportunity for other types of events at that stadium. The real key here is that in order to build a stadium in a smaller market, you need an NFL team that gets the benefit of some place to play, putting in their half a billion dollars. You need developers who see a return on investment, but not a return that could gener generate enough uh, to invest a billion and a half dollars. And you need the, the ancillary benefits to the community that allows tax dollars to go into the stadium. A market this size needs all three. And it, it, distributed, it distributes the risk, and it also provides different types of benefits for different types of investors. Tell me about this proposal that's out there. Most people don't understand what tax increment financing is or, or what a TID might look like. Uh, this is a way, though, for the developers to essentially recoup their investment. And uh, uh, here's the arguments I've heard before on this, Mr. Hill, is that, listen, there wasn't going to be anything there before, so there wasn't going to be any tax revenue. But if you put it there, something there, then there is tax revenue that ordinarily would go into the state's general fund and for other purposes, so essentially it'd be diverted from there to pay back the developers. Tell me, tell me about where that is. Well, the, the tax increment district, the way it was proposed in our proposal, um, was just around the stadium. So it would be new taxes that are generated as a result of the stadium that would, then would be put back into um, the stadium operating company, which is really the, the team and the developers, uh, to allow them to make a return on investment that we have capped before sharing at 9%. Uh, so if that turns into a lot more tax money than we expected, then we would share in the, um, in the excess. Um, if they agree to that deal. Certainly. Okay. You know, that's, that's what's in our proposal right. at this point. Um, as, um, as we look at this, we may need to broaden that tax increment district. I would really doubt that that broadening of the tax district goes outside of the new development that would be around the stadium itself as well. So if there was, um, um, you know, you can look at what they did around Staples Centers. Um, that type of development that is associated with the stadium may also be included. In case people don't know, that's in L.A. That's right. Yeah. That's where the Lakers play. That's right. Um, and a number of stadiums have that type of development around it. So that might be included. But it would all be new investment and the taxes that that new investment generated. Let's talk about sites. Uh, uh, it, it seems to me now, and the Sands folks have just uh, essentially acknowledged that they're focusing on the Bally High Golf Course, uh, which has some issues with height restrictions. It's near it's near the airport. There's an issue that the, that the, the, the Billy Walters, the developer, has a lease on that. They would have to get the lease away from him. There's also talk about the Wild West site that, that's owned by the, uh, the, the Fertitas. And then there's 62 acres or so, I gather, on Russell Road mm -hmm. that's not far from there. Are those essentially the three sites that we're looking at now? Th those seem to be the three sites sites that the developers are most interested in right now. Um, the, the, the Bally High site has um, the potential to have 
um, implications through the FAA in flights. Um, and I, I think, as um, Commissioner Sislak said, uh, if you move the stadium far enough north on that site, it will probably work. Um, what I've asked the developers uh, to do is have a, an alternative site to Bally High that we know will work, or have great certainty that it will work. Um, I don't think it is fair to go to the legislature um, with uh, a request and still have um, whether or not the stadium could be built um, one of the concerns. Um, if Bally High is the only site, I don't think we'll have answers from the FAA in time. Um, and so I've asked to have an alternative. Now, they can improve on both of those alternatives in the future, and the Stadium Authority Board would oversee and have the responsibility to approve the final site. Um, but uh, we do want to know that the stadium actually can happen in at least one of the sites that they focus on. Could the NFL owners still approve this? And you need 24 out of 32, I believe. That's right. Uh, could they approve this without having a site set in stone? Or, or do they have the ability to do that? Well, I think the NFL probably has the ability to do whatever they want. I do not think they would do that. Okay, so, so, so it would have to be done by then. Could, could the FAA process, though, on, on the Bally High site? My, my understanding is with any bureaucracy, it could take, we don't know, it could be two months, it could be four months, it could be a year, right? It, it, it could be, and um, which is why we've said we, that's fine. Fo focus on that site, but also focus on a site that is more certain. And, and you, you talk to these folks all the time. Do you get a sense that they're near a deal to, with Mr. Walters on the lease for, for Bally High? That I really don't know. I don't know what the uh, conversations with Mr. Walters and the developers has been. I don't want to, I don't want to go, keep going on too long on this, but let, let, let's get down to brass tacks. Uh, the stadium committee is meeting again a week from Thursday, right. uh, and, and you're hoping to be done with all of your work uh, by September, correct? That's right. The, the, the executive order extended the committee through the end of September, and I don't think it will be extended again. And you think you can get everybody on the same page, meaning the developers and, and the committee on the same page by the end of September? Well, we have the time to do that, yes. Um, now, but what's your feel for this? I mean, what do you really think? Well, you know, as I've told you on some of the other deals we've done, whether it was Tesla or Faraday, um, I think it's important not to fall in love with a deal. Um, so starting to project what the percentages are for getting something done or not d really detracts from, I think, what our role is, which is to make sure that we make a deal that makes sense for all Nevadans. And if we can, we have time to do that, but we have to realize that there, that may not be um, something that developers or, team, or the team agree with, and therefore we don't reach an agreement. So both are possible. I've been led to believe that once in a while you talk to the governor, uh, who is uh, your boss essentially. Uh, is more, he, more than essentially. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> is, is, I keep hearing that he is not satisfied with $750 million. Uh, is that true? Um, in you know, public I, I, money. I, I don't want to speak for the governor, but I, 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 I don't think that uh, seven hundred fifty million dollars is a number that uh, he would support. Um, what the number is, uh, you'd have to ask him. Um, that's easier said than done. Uh, I, I, he also does not want to call a special session before uh, the, the election. I, I gather you probably have, have heard this. Does that seem accurate to you? Um, and I don't know that he's weighed in on the timing of a session at all. I mean, I think what he has said is uh, he'll consider it once he gets a recommendation. Um, he's certainly aware of the timing uh, from a team standpoint and that we have this opportunity and it may change uh, if we don't get a deal done and pass through the legislature by the time the NFL requires it to be done. So he's, he's obviously aware of the timeline, but he hasn't. Um, made any uh, pronouncements on the time. But if you, had, if you had a special session right after the election, so as to not interfere with the elections, which would be the concern, th is that enough time? Let's, let's just say November 15th to 18th. Let's just, is that still enough time to get, to the, get everything to the NFL in time, have probably a site that, they, that they, they can, at least even if it's a backup site, to Bally High? Is that, does that timeline work, do you well, think? Well, th it, would, it would require the team to um, invest uh, a fair amount of money between say now and then 
um, based on putting the proposal together to the NFL. It's an expensive process. They need uh, a fair amount of architectural work that is not inexpensive uh, in, in order to take it to the NFL in January or February. So they would have to, if that was the timing, they would have to take the additional step of putting that money, um, additional money at risk in order to make the timeline work. If they're willing to do that, then I, I do think that that timeline would work. Are you optimistic? Kind of back to the same answer. I try not to uh, qualify those types of things. Um, we have time to do this. We certainly would like to see this get done. Um, but it needs to be a deal that's in the best interest of Nevada, and we're going to continue to work on that to see if we can make that happen. I can't in the next get you off weeks. that position. I see. Uh, well, give me a sense of the rest of the committee. I pretty much know where Steve Sislak stands and where Carolyn Goodman stands. By the way, there's very little chance Cashman Field is going to come into play here, right? Well, I, I think that the, the one thing that Cashman has going for it is that it is a certain site. You can build the stadium there. And we have asked that that be one of the but it's that, not in the top tier, though. But, but, it, but it's not. Um, I, part of that economic impact um, revolves around having a stadium that's close to the Strip. And as you start to move away from the Strip, you start to detract from that economic impact. Um, it would be beneficial for downtown, but um, that would be a different set of reasons. Um, and so I think the economic impact would, would probably start to go down if it wasn't walkable from the strip. Many of the rest of the members on that committee are, are representatives of other gaming properties. Mm -hmm. uh, what do you get the sense? Are, are there uh, uh, hills to die for or, or, or things that they're concerned about? Because it is a competitor of theirs. There, there is a representative of the Sands on there as well. Yes. But some of the competitors there, are, are, they, are they supportive of this if the deal is right, to use your words, in the best interests of Nevada? Do you get that sense? Yeah, I do get that sense. Uh, and I, the, I, it's not just a sense. I think all of them have said something along those lines. Um, during I, committee meetings. I don't always take at face value what people say at public meetings. I'm sorry to tell you that. <laughs> Maybe it's cynicism born of too many years. Well, but they're not in a position where they have to say something. So I, I, They're I, not elected officials. Yeah, right. Well, and um, they could remain quiet at this point as well. I think all of them uh, representing the, the properties have made the comment that they would like to see this happen as long as the deal's right. All right, uh, I'm going to ask you one last question uh, off topic because we're, we're out of time. There's been a lot of talk, and I admit that maybe I've generated some of it, that you might be interested in running for elective office yourself uh, come 2018, maybe even be interested in running for governor, are you? Well, I'm, I'm focused on the stadium project at this point. I think we ought to get through another election before we start thinking about the one following that. No, so, crazy people like me are not uh, like you're, that. You're the only person asking that question, only, John. Your, your wife's not asking you that question? <laughs> <laughs> so you're, you don't want to answer it is what you're telling me. Well, I am starting to think about that. I think it's premature. All right. Steve Hill, pleasure having you. Thanks for coming on. Thank you, John. All right.